Salutations friends, my name is Gio and I am here to explore the overlapping frontier of AI art and design for actionable nuggets that you can apply to your creative life. This is part two of a series on how to use AI to make a graphic novel, and even if you're not making a comic, these techniques will increase both the quality and quantity of your creative output. In my last video, I shared a time lapse of a workflow that combines Stable Diffusion, Procreate, Photoshop, and Figma. Today I'm going to slow that time lapse down and zoom in on some key moments to teach you some AI art techniques, so let's dive right in. So here we are starting out with Procreate, and in the dawn of the AI art era, you might ask, hey, why not just jump directly into working with AI tools and make the image from scratch in Stable Diffusion or Midjourney? And one reason is that generative AI tools are great for quickly iterating on a bazillion concepts and directions, but if you've got a very specific result in mind that you're trying to achieve, it's generally going to require a lot of trial and error dice rolls with prompt crafting and in-painting. Now, those tools are definitely useful, and you're going to see how we leverage those to great effect later in this workflow, but if you've already started playing with those tools, you might have already started asking yourself, hey, wait, is this AI stuff actually saving me any time? Especially now that you have maybe hundreds of iterations to manage and sift through, and I've got some handy tips for that coming up later too. So I like to start with Procreate because, frankly, I love the loose, playful freedom of digital drawing and painting, and because a picture is worth a thousand words, or rather, a simple sketch is worth a thousand prompts. AI reacts to the inputs you give it, and even a quick sketch with a little color serves as a jumping off point for the AI with a very clear set of instructions and a direction for the AI to iterate on. And Procreate is my favorite app for that, just drawing directly onto the tablet surface for greater freedom and accuracy and fine motor control. As you can see, I'm zooming way in and rotating the canvas easily with a gesture to get just the right wrist angle for greater accuracy. And when it's time to create these flat cells of color, Procreate's lasso tool is just superior to any other app I've used. You can use repeated dots to tap out the line, and it makes it easy to undo or redo individual points along that line that way, unlike other apps. And I've learned that color heavily influences AI output, so I want to make sure to include even a rudimentary palette at this stage. So before we move on to Stable Diffusion, just giving Procreate a plug here, amazing app, super affordable, just a few bucks as a one-time purchase in a world of subscriptions, super easy to export a time-lapse or record on iPad with native screen capture like what I'm doing here, and as a UX designer I admire all the user-centered thinking they put into how to give you all these gestural commands without a keyboard for a really fluid, intuitive interface. So from here I'm venturing into the AI exploration part of the workflow, starting with Midjourney. And while Midjourney is an incredible tool for a lot of tasks and gives really great outputs right away almost by default, I find that it's trickier to reliably control. I showed in a previous video how you can feed Midjourney a rough sketch, and it helps to narrow in on your imagined result which is super fun, really powerful. But in this case I have a specific character already designed for a moment in a story I've written, so I want the AI to consistently stick with the same clothes from frame to frame, for example. And I'm approaching this AI workflow with a beginner's mind, or an empty cup, as Bruce Lee once said. This is an exploration of what's possible, learning as we go and sharing those learnings with each other. So for example, maybe you know a better way to achieve this kind of more specific, consistent character result using Midjourney, and if so, I'd love it if you'd share it in the comments so we can all learn from it together. But for the moment in the workflow, the truth is, I felt like it just wasn't the right tool for the job, so I booted up Stable Diffusion running locally on my computer using the automatic 11.11 user interface in my browser like this. This is an amazingly powerful engine for creativity, but I only really want to use it if it's faster than just drawing. I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to define the composition by writing it out in the prompts. I want to rough in the composition with the sketch because it's faster and more fun for me and I know what I want and I can see it in my imagination. I want the AI to layer in the detail, to infuse it with more life. And once you've fed your idea to the AI as a sketch, the best way to bring it to life is with an elegant prompt. 
Figuring out how to write a good prompt is such a fascinating exercise, like you're reaching around in this dark mine until you stumble across this incantation to wink something new into existence, and there are apparently a lot of busy internet gnomes spelunking those depths because they are selling them on prompt base for two or five bucks a pop, you can eat them up like magical popcorn. So here I've got a collection of prompts I've purchased in advance, you can see, again, these are very affordable, just a couple bucks each, and I've got a lot of characters and environments because those are the primary subjects of a graphic novel project, a lot of the time. And for this particular demo, the one that I used was fantasy character portraits over here. When you purchase the prompt, it literally just gives it to you as text, just sitting in your account forever, and it's easy to navigate to and copy and paste here as just a shortcut for snagging that again when you need it and there's extra instructions and often settings that they recommend to go with it. Applying those settings helps you get to the results that you're after that much easier. Starting with a good prompt that you know is gonna work pretty well off the bat is a big time saver. And then if you just keep a browser tab open like this to show your collection, it's easy to jump back and forth between Stable Diffusion and your list of prompts, and then you can easily make variations and so forth. So back in Stable Diffusion, the prompt craft is really important, and the other element that's really important is the model. And I've got several that I've downloaded that are showing up in this menu here. I think I got all of these from the Hugging Face community. I kind of think of it like the model is the lens and the prompt is like the beam of light that you're focusing through that lens to get a laser targeted burst of intentionality. I like to draw comparisons to archery, draw back and aim at an intended target and trying to get as close to the mark as possible with each repeated shot. And over time, as you get better at it, it takes you fewer attempts to get the results that you really want. I'm liking these outputs. One tip is that I found that the denoising strength set to four was giving me the best results here. Gives it enough creative rain to add on the detail that I want while also staying very close to the original composition. So I have a few models and prompt combinations that I'll be switching back and forth on depending on whether the comic panel frame I'm working on is a portrait or a landscape. Here I'm changing the aspect ratio of the output so that it's closer to the original. And look how fast these iterations are pumping out here. Obviously the time lapse is sped up, but still getting a lot of really good results really quickly. For hardware and graphics cards, I'm using two RTX 3090s that I bought during a shortage. Turns out that one of the few places you could get those was to buy them included in this high-end machine learning rig used to train AI models and mine crypto and do heavy 3D rendering for animation. I'll put the link down in the description. Which leads to the question, as an artist, how do I afford this expensive equipment that helps me enjoy my personal creative time? What's been working for me is to use my storytelling powers working as a UX designer in the tech industry, and if you would like to learn more about how you can break into that world and use your creativity to earn that kind of financial prosperity and security, hit that subscribe button so you'll see more of that content on my channel as it comes out. So now we have all these AI generated images, and as a result we have a lot of options, maybe even too many options, because now we have to sift through them all, and as they teach in the UX design field, the more options you have, the longer it takes to make a decision and pick a direction and move forward. So now what's a good way to solve this? What do you actually do with all of your AI art outputs? Tune in for part 3 of this series where I'll give a demo of how to use Figma as a bridge between the other parts of your art workflow, organize your assets, and get the most out of your AI generated wizardry. Thanks for leaving a like if you enjoyed this content, love to hear any questions you might have in the comments, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.